الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين وكفى والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه جمعين ومن سن سنته واهتدى بهده لا يوم الدين ما بعد فعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إنما إنما المؤمنون إخوة فأصلحوا بين أخويكم واتقوا الله لعلكم ترحمون صدق الله العظيم ما ديان رسپكتر برادر وسستر الإسلام السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته ما ديان برادر وسستر the basis of our iman the foundation of our faith is on the fact that our Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was the prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is the basis of all our iman. We did not see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We did not meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. None of us ever met or saw Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So our faith upon Allah is based on the faith on our Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So it is Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who told us that Allah is one. That is the main reason why we say la ilaha illallah. Had Allah not sent Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in this world, then most of us would have been doing shirk. Most of us would not have been believing in la ilaha illallah. Therefore, it is our Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's coming in this world that made you and me believe in the tawheed la ilaha illallah. This is why in order to be a faithful believer, before we believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is must that we first believe in Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as the Rasul of Allah. So when we say La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam So La ilaha illallah is our goal We want to believe in La ilaha illallah But we cannot reach our goal Until we believe in the mean And the mean is our Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Therefore the more you will read and the more you will acquire knowledge about Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the more your faith upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grow. Because the basis of the teaching of our Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was la ilaha illallah. As Allah in Quran have said that fa'lam annahu la ilaha illallah. O people, learn knowledge acquire knowledge so that it becomes evident clear to you that there's no God but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala therefore the nubuwwat and the prophethood of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the basis of our iman now when we look into the life of our Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam we find many 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 proofs to prove that our Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was the Rasul of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The biggest proof is Quran itself. Then Rasulullah's entire life is another proof that Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was the Rasul of Allah. But my dear, dear brothers and sisters, when we look into the teaching of our Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we find out that the teaching of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam are based upon universal truth. In other words, every call, every saying of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is uniting the people. Meaning, Rasulullah Sallallahu never ever, not even for once, ever, did 
any sermon. He did not taught a single person to hate and to fight with, with people. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Al-Khalqu ayalullah. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught us that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have sent us in this world to live in harmony and brotherhood and sisterhood. That, that's why Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam always dislike. And dislike is, is a very easy word, a very light word. But the right word should be hated. Rasulullah hated all kind of wars. Rasulullah's nature was not to fight. Rasulullah's nature was to, to unite the people. And sometimes it happened that Rasulullah preferred, right, patching the differences between two fighting groups over praying salah. Over praying salah. Meaning Rasulullah delayed praying salah. He delayed it. But Rasulullah preferred to first take care of those people who were about to go into some kind of fighting. And Rasulullah when he would see that there is a possibility of any kind of disagreement between Muslim, between Sahaba, Rasulullah would delay praying salah. Now remember I'm saying salah because the most important act in our religion is a salah. But Rasulullah would delay praying salah in order to, to first achieve peace between two fighting groups of people. Right? I, I can give you two, three quick examples. One time our Rasul was traveling. Everybody was extremely tired. And in the middle of the desert, when the night came, Rasulullah went to sleep and over 3,000 Sahaba were there. Everybody went to sleep. And before going to see sleep, Rasulullah asked Sahaba who would voluntarily come forward to be the harith for the night. And it, was, it will be his job to wake everybody up for, for Fajr. So Bilal came forward and said, everybody can go to sleep, I will wake people up at Fajr. He was up all night just, just before Fajr, by mistake he, he went to sleep. The sun came out, neither Rasulullah prayed Salah nor Sahaba prayed Salah. Umar got up and he yelled, Bilal, what's going on? You are sleeping. You took this responsibility of waking us up. We were so tired. We depended upon you and you went to sleep. Look, the sun is up. Rasulullah woke up, Sahaba woke up and everybody was extremely angry at Bilal. And things were about to get out of hand. What did Rasulullah do? Rasulullah did not say, okay, make wudu, let's pray salah. No. Rasulullah said what he did was he said, okay, everybody start packing up. Let's move. Let's move. Now what Rasulullah said, let's move. Let's start packing up and move. Now the attention of Sahaba was no, no more on fighting with Bilal and on arguments. Everybody started looking for their belongings. They pick up their belongings, tie their belongings up with the camel and here they started moving. So that issue was done. It was done with. And Rasulullah kept on moving with Sahaba till they reached a certain place. And then Rasulullah felt that now the emotions have cooled down. So Rasulullah said, okay, now stop here. I see water there. Everybody go make wudu and let's pray for your salah here. Now, a faqih, a person, a mufti will say, mm, you know, when a person oversleeps, let's say you overslept for Fajr, right? Now what is the first thing that, that you should do? Right? Go do miswag, brush your teeth, make wudu and pray Fajr right away. Because you, now you cannot delay. You're up. 
So a mufti would say this, but our Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam, the Nabi of Allah subhanahu wa taala, his uh, goal was always to avoid disagreements. So he delayed salah, but he made sure that there is no disagreement. And then another incident that I have often given to you is that famous incident where near Madina Mubarak, a group of two Muslims into going into argument and they were about to start fighting. Rasulullah came to know and Rasulullah left for that village. And then he appointed two Sahaba, two or three Sahaba at, at Masjid Nawi and said, when Sahaba come for Asir Salah, tell them not to pray Asir Salah. Instead, instead, all of them should come to that village. All of them. Right? And we are going to pray Asir Salah there. So imagine, Masjid al-Nabawi, the most blessed place on earth after Masjid al-Haram, after Kaaba. And people are coming to pray a fourth Salah. One Salah in Masjid al-Nabawi equals to how much? 50,000 Salah. But this is the reward. Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was looking at avoiding conflicts. So he forbade upon Sahaba from praying Asir Salah in Masjid Nawi. And he said, everybody should come there. And so Sahaba came for, for Asir. And these two, three Sahaba said, no. Rasulullah said, nobody will pray Asir, everybody go there. So Sahaba went there. One Sahabi even missed Maghrib, uh, Asir Salah. He reached there by the time of Maghrib. Rasulullah said, don't worry about it. Pray now. But that conflict was avoided. A possible, you know, ugly scene was avoided. Right? So when you look into the instances, such instances during the time of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, what we learn is that the conflict, fights, disagreements, right, must be avoided at every cost. Right? Now, and as I mentioned to you earlier, that our Rasul nature was that he used to hate all kind of fights. Right? So, before Rasulullah became Nabi, there was a war going on among Arabs for many, many, many years. It was called Harb Fijar. Harb Fijar means this war was just going on and on and on. Not only for one year, two years, but for many, many, many years. So since Rasulullah was born in Makkah, he was raised in Makkah, he will see people going, he will see uh, people going to, to, to this war, taking their children. They'll come back wounded. They'll come back, you know, with few, few amount of people because the rest of them died in the war. So there was so much misery due to, due to, to this raw war, the Rasulullah Sallallahu would keep on witnessing these miseries. So Rasulullah started hating all kinds of wars. Now when Rasulullah Sallallahu was a young man, still not a Nabi. So some elders of Makkah got together and they said, we need to come together and put a stop to this war. <coughs> so those people who signed that truce, among them was our Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So because of this truce, that long war, that lengthy war came to an end. And here Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam became a Nabi at the age of 40 and then Rasulullah moved to Medina at the age of 53. One day our Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was sitting in Medina Munawwara and he mentioned that that act of mine, that signature that I put, on that truce that brought that Harb Fijar to an end. That act is so beloved to me that if we, I will be called upon to do, do the same act today, I will leave everything behind and I will go and I will sign on that document again. Why? Because that truce had brought that war to an end. My dear brothers and sisters, I'm reminding 
some of these facts from Siyatul Nabi Sallallahu I'm pretty sure these three incidents that I mentioned to you must have heard it or you must have read in Siyatul Nabi Sallallahu But my dear, dear brothers and sisters, in the last 10 days, right, how many innocent people were killed in Palestine? Right? Why did they die? Go back a few years. The, the unnecessary war between Iraq and Iran, those 10 year long war. Who died there? Why did they die? You know, why did they die? Unnecessary war. And I'm using this word unnecessary war because one of the most evil person that had li lived on this earth was Winston Churchill, the Prime Minister of uh, England. He was one of the most ar main architect of the Second World War. Right? Very evil person. If you read his Winston Churchill's life story, you'll be shocked how evil he was. I'll give you one instance in Bengal, West Bengal, right? Some people from Bengal are here. The famous famine took place in which hundreds of thousands of people died. And India has so much of stockpile of food, grain, everything, rice. And Bengal is dying because of starvation. So, Winston Churchill, he ordered the Indian government, because India was a colony of, of British at that time, that this food should be sent to England and to other countries, you know, where Britain had their uh, presence. So even Britishers asked Mr. Churchill, that why do you want to do this when Bengal needs uh, food desperately? He used a curse word for Indians. And he said, let them die, who cares? Who cares? And he used a few curse words. And millions of people died, not only a few. If you look in, go on Google and see how, much, how many people died in that famine, right? I think it was in 1930s. Same person, he was one of the most main architects of the Second World War. And remember, 46 million people, according to one survey, died in the Second World War. 46 million human beings died. He was one of them. And after the war was over, one day he was sitting and a journalist asked him a question about the Second World War. Why smoking? While smoking his famous cigar, he said, yeah, it was an unnecessary war. <laughs> 46 million people died, it was an unnecessary war. Right? But, my dear, dear brothers and sisters, Iraq, Iran, two Muslim countries, fought for 10 years. See how many million people died. And after 10 years, abruptly, the two leaders of the country, they came together and said, okay, enough is enough, let's finish it. As if, as if it's like a game. Then my dear brothers and sisters, look into so many Muslim countries. Lately, Yemen. Right? How many people are still dying due to starvation? Right? How many? And how many have been bombed from the sky? What was their fault? Right? I read the other day, like the other day means a few years ago now, that some children in a school were playing soccer. Children in Yemen, Sanai. Sana'a, right? And a bomb came from the sky, killed all of them. Children. What was their fault? Bi ayyi dhambin qutilat. What was their fault? Then in Syria, for the last 10, 12 years, millions of people have died, literally million now. More than million. Imagine, my dear, dear brothers and sisters, if our Rasul was present today, 
what would be his role in the present conflicts out there because remember look into siyatun nabi sallallahu how many people died during the lifetime of of rasul 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 sallallahu during these wars right it said only a hundred and i think 160 some sahaba died that's it in second world, world war 46 million people died my dear brothers and sisters, the point that I'm trying to stress upon here is that if you and I are the true followers and the believers and the ummati of, of Rasul Wasallam, we have to play a very positive role on this earth. How we can bring these conflicts to an end, how, what role can we play? Right? How can we, you know, bring peace in the world? Because this is not the job of the leaders only. Rasulullah said, Kullukum mas'ul. Each one of you is responsible of bringing peace on this earth. It is important. And one more thing, brothers and sisters, which all of you, especially the youngsters, must understand is that our Rasul Sallallahu taught us that we should not live for ourselves. We should live for others. We should live for others. Because Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala said, Kuntum khaya ummatin ukhrijat not, not li anfusikum. Ukhrijat lin nas. Allah said, Amma ma yanfa'un nas. Not yanfa'u anfusahum. Allah said, you have been sent not to live for yourself. You have been sent to serve the people. So when you are, for example, youngsters, when you are looking for a profession for yourself, you should look what profession should you take which will be beneficial for the ummah. You know, Rashida Talib, right, this congresswoman, when she was delivering that speech, for nine minutes she spoke in, in the Congress and she raised this issue of this conflict in the Middle East. The world listened. It had a profound effect on the media. There's a shift now in this country when it comes to, to Middle East conflicts. Why? Because one Muslim sister stood up and talked with passion. She made a change. She made a change. So much so that Fox television for the first time is talking about this conflict. And they are talking in a neutral way now for the first time. Why? Because a congresswoman stood up on the floor and presented the facts to the people. Because unfortunately, my dear brothers and sisters, when we pray Salah, Alhamdulillah, we pray Salah to the Qibla, but the Qibla of our heart is U.S. Don't look at Muslim countries to change. When the change will come here in the Senate and Congress, then the repercussion of this will be felt in Muslim countries. The problem with us is that we don't want to go into politics. When we are looking for profession, a profession for ourselves, the first thing that we see is, and we look into it, which profession will give me the most amount of money. And you as a parent, you also do the same thing. You tell your child, go into that certain profession because that profession will give you the most amount of money. Money should not be the reason for our uh, decisions. If money could have brought respect and honor and dignity for you and me, then Middle Eastern countries are loaded with money. They have no say in, in the world politics. Sorry to say that they, they don't, they don't stand, stand anywhere in the world stage. We all know that. So money will not buy you dignity and 
respect. And Allah said, "Ayabtaguna indahum al-izza, fa inna al-izza lillahi jamia." Allah said, "Izza is 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 in my hand." So the problem, brother, is until you and I change, Allah will not change the condition of this ummah. I mean, we are nearly 10 millions in in uh, in this country, and we are just growing, growing, right, rapidly. Still, we have only two Muslim Congress women in the in the Congress. Not as not even one Muslim senator. There are hundred senators, two senators from every state, hundred senators. Not a single um, senator who happens to be a Muslim. But what you and I are doing is that we are looking at these horrific uh, acts of violence and we are cursing others, right? But we are not understanding that we have to play the role that Allah and Rasul intended you and me to, uh, to play. And this is the best country, brothers and sisters, to live in and to make your, your, your career in. Why don't you go into politics? I mean, when you go into politics, whether you are a male or female, you go into politics, raise your concerns, raise your issues, the world will, will listen. If you are correct, if you are right, if your facts are right, the, you know, the greatness of this country is that people from everywhere come in this country. And they can become whatever they want to, to, to become. Right? Therefore, by dear, dear brother, this, these conflicts where people are dying, it definitely hurts you. If you have a, a heart that is beating in your body, you feel the pain. But what are we doing? Just du'as, just du'as are not good, uh, good, good enough. If dua was, impo was, was the solution, the Rasulullah would not have gone for Badr, Uhud, and Khandaq, and, uh, 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 and all that. No, Rasulullah went out, then made dua. So if you can, you can pray tahajjud as long as you want and pray and make dua. But that's not the solution. Yes, we'll make dua, but first we'll do whatever we can. As Rasulullah said, i'qilha and then watawakkal. First tie the camel and then trust Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. On the night of battle of Badr, think brothers and sisters, the battle of Badr, Rasulullah took all sahaba out, 313, lined them up. And then Rasulullah went under the, the small tent that Abu Bakr had put for Rasulullah sallam. And Rasulullah sallam is there making dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allahumma in tuhlika hadhi al-usaba la tu'abad filad. Wallah, if this, this small group of sahaba will be killed today, I can tell you Allah, you will never be, be worshipped again on this earth. Such a powerful dua Rasulullah said. But this dua came later on. First Rasulullah lined sahaba up. Right? So we need to understand, yes, dua is, is important. But destinies cannot be just changed through, through dua. We have to work hard. That hadith of Rasul that nothing could, could, could change your destiny except dua, that is right. But do not misunderstand it. It does not mean that you should not do nothing. Look into Siyatun Nabi Wasallam. Did Rasulullah do nothing? And did Rasulullah made dua only? So it hurts when you see people cursing the enemies, cursing others. But you see Muslims not doing their part. This is the best country where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have sent you. Play a positive part. You know, try to play your part in bringing peace in the world. If that, if, if that would ask you to go to uh, politics, go. Into media, go. Law, go. But don't make your decisions for your profession on money only. On money only. Right? So my dear 
برادر اینڈ سسٹرز لرن سیت النبی صلی اللہ وسلم لک ایٹ ہاؤ رسول اللہ وسلم وانٹیڈ دس اما ٹو بی اینڈ لک ہاؤ فار ہیو یو گون اوے فرام سیت النبی صلی اللہ وسلم دیر از اے کروکیڈ وے آف لکنگ ایٹ اسلام ان اوور ہیڈ ویری کروکیڈ وے وی آر سو مچ ٹریڈیشنلسٹ ناؤ Then we say, in our tradition, at my home, in my country, it, things don't used to happen like that. Allah in Quran said, Sibghat Allah. Look at the tradition of Allah. وَمَنْ أَحْسَنُ مِنَ اللَّهِ سِبْغَةً Which law could be better than the law of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, ta'ala help you and may understand. Subhanallah wa bihamdi, subhanakallah wa bihamdi, kanashadu wa la ilaha illa anta nasta'afu wa ta'ala.